What's up, tech art rock stars? I want to join you today. I've been having a fun weekend attempting to put Unix-like operating systems on our old tech that we love. I've been working with a 386 machine and a 486 that I'm going to share with you today. Some of the channel viewers have seen this machine before. Let's take a look. Oh, this is the Dolch Pack 60. It's a 4666. I think it's a DX, but whatever. Uh, it's a portable, luggable. So I can drop the keyboard down. And this is going to be our setup today. Um, we're going to be working with a Unix-like software called Minix. The current version is 3.3, I think, or it's in the threes, though. And we're going to be playing with 2.0.4, which is a good candidate for 286 to 486 machines. Now, what are we going to need? Well, we'll need a 486. We'll need a new computer to do some disk imaging stuff because we'll also need to bring a couple devices. We'll have a USB stick. This will hold our GoTech image files. Um, so I'll throw that in the GoTech over here. There's that. And we'll bring a CF card with us today. This is a two gigabyte uh, CF card. And all I've done to prepare it is I popped it in Gparted or whatever partition um, editor. And I've only written an MS-DOS partition table. The two gigabytes is unallocated, so it's just, you know, an empty CF card with an MS-DOS partition table. And I can throw that in the uh, CF card reader that I have installed in the Dolch. Let me wire up the keyboard. Don't forget if you're working on these old systems, you might need an AT cable. Oh, and we're gonna need some power. So, I have a power cable hidden over here. We can make sure the Dolch is powered up and let's get started. All right, guys, here we are on the stream. Let's pull up some info and learn a tiny bit about Minix before we get going. I'll pull up a web browser. So first on Wikipedia, Minix is a Unix-like operating system based on a microkernel architecture. It's POSIX compliant and was created by Andrew Tannenbaum for educational purposes. There is a version 3 that is still current, but it's a little long in the tooth. It's a lot long in the tooth, but it's still current, but we're going to focus on version 2.0.4. Let me pull that website up. Minix 2.0.4. The reason that we're going to direct our efforts at version 2 is that it's usable on 386, 486, even 286 machines if you use the small flavor. And you can run it under DOS or Windows. You can have your DOS partition and your Minix partition and everything would work. But we are going to install it right on the metal. We're going to install it right on our Dolch. That being said, what we need to grab are all of the 386, 486 Pentium files. What they consist of is an i386 folder and a source folder. The root.mnx and user.mnx are what you boot and are the first installation uh, medias. And then net.taz, user.taz, sys.taz, all these other files are extra things that you can install to your system after you've got your base um, installation. Let me download all these files, and then I'm gonna show you some of the magic and how we're gonna get this onto a GoTech. As you can see right here, for the root and user file bases, you can literally just cat those both, root.mnx and user.mnx, to a floppy drive. But we're using GoTech, so what do we do? Let's check it out. I'll pull up a terminal real quick. You can ignore for now the created images folder. I've made that, and you'll understand in a moment. But here's our i386 and source. So 
So if I take a look at those, you can see there the root.mnx, user.mnx that we're going to install with, and then some of the other um, things. And in the source folder are the other parts of the system. So this is a little bit tricky. First, we can just cat. Oops, I have to switch into the i386 folder. First, we can just cat um, root.mnx and user.mnx into root-user.mnx.image. Now, if we take a look at the directory, you can see we have a 1.2 megabyte root-user.mnx.image. And we can insert this into our Dolch GoTek drive, and that's what we're going to be booting on. Now, the other ones are a little bit trickier because uh, user.taz is 4.1 megabits uh, large. Well, how do we handle that? There was some information. I'm going to switch back to the web browser real quick. Under here, do you see if you were using a regular floppy disk, you could use DD and uh, copy those into your floppy and use skip equals zero, skip equals one because it's counting 1440K, which is a floppy drive, and skip number two. For us, we'll have to switch up this third command a little bit. I'll put them on screen, but um, here's how we're going to do that. Go back over here. We'll do dd if equals user.taz, and that's that four megabyte one. And we're going to do of equals user.taz dash one dot image. It'll be the first disk of three that we're creating for our GoTech drive. We're going to make sure that bs is equals 1440k, so it knows how much to count up to. The counts equal one. And then we're going to do skip equals zero because we don't want it to skip any part of this file. We want it to start at the first byte and go to 1440 bytes. So we can run that command. Okay. Now for the next one, we're going to change skip to one and we'll just change this file name. And now if you notice on that command, uh, DD is going to read user.taz starting at 1441 bits or bytes or whatever it is. And then it's going to count 1, 1440. So it's going to write the second disk. Okay. We've already written the first 1440 bytes and now we're kilobytes. And now we're going to the next 1440. So let's do that. Now, one would think that we just changed the skip to two and the image to the third disk and run it. Uh, but do you notice what's different down there? Look at the bytes transferred, and this doesn't add up to 1440K, which is 1.4 megabit disk drive. And go, your GoTech won't read that. It'll show an error. So how can we fix that? Let's get the command up again, and we can write conv equals sync. So we want it to sync all the way through that 1440K. Let's try that command. Okay, now you see the bytes transferred is the same 14147 as the other two up there. Let's list those files. And you see all of your user images are all 1.5 megabits. So there we've taken user.taz and exported it to three files that will work in our GoTech drive. Now just to show you, I'm gonna go into that created images uh, folder that I told you to ignore earlier and I'll list all the files. These are all of the files that I created using the same techniques as before, either DD or CAT, depending on how large they were. Some were only 440K like the network one. But I'm going to take all these files here, throw them on my GoTech, and I'm going to meet you guys at the Dolch. Let's get Minix installed. The first image file that I have selected on the GoTech is the root-boot.mnx.image file. Let's boot into that first. I can see that it's selected over here. Here's the Minix boot monitor. We could press escape and enter the monitor, but we're going to start Minix by pressing equal. It'll load Minix into memory. I think it's 480K. Creating a RAM disk.
We want to boot the floppy drive as the slash user, so it's FD0P2, floppy disk 0, partition 2. Okay, we can log in as root, and let's start the setup program. We can press return to go past this information screen. We'll select a US-standard keyboard, and we can press enter again. Okay. Here we are in the partition manager. If we press down, it'll populate. But since we have a completely blank CF card, it shows nothing. I'm gonna go over to the type and I'm gonna walk backwards to type 81, which I think is Minix. Oops, was it right there? 81, Minix. Then I'll move over to the KB line and let's type 999999. Okay, that should create a one gigabyte partition. So I'll press Q and save the partition table. Now, we've created our primary partition at C0, D0, P0. Minix will suggest a swap space if needed. We have 16 megabytes, and Minix can be finicky with a swap, so we'll leave that at zero. And it'll tell us where our sub partitions are going. We can press delete to stop the scan. It's just a CF disk. And Minix will start doing its thing. All right, let's let the boot and root disk install. We'll zoom out and let it do its thing. Minix will be installed just after this step, but then we're gonna walk through and install those other parts of Minix. So here it's finished. The root floppy is still inserted into our GoTech, so we'll type halt. And then let's test the boot on our hard drive by typing in boot C0, D0, P0. Let's see what happens. Well, there's Minix, right on, but now we're booting from our hard drive over there. Let's get into our Minix. And now our slash user partition is actually on C0, D0, P0, sub volume 2, S2. We'll log in as root. Now we're going to grab that user.taz file, which we've separated into three disks, user.taz-1.image through dash three dot image. So I'll twist my GoTech. And I'll select user.taz dash one. Once that disk is in the GoTech, we can type setup, but this time we'll do slash USR because we're gonna install to our slash user folder. We're gonna use all, I'll zoom in for you guys. We're gonna use all of the size of the images on the disks and we want FD0. We'll double check and make sure that user TAS1 is inserted, and it is. So let's install that bad boy. You might see here some issues about can't create directory, and that's because those directories are already present through the boot and root installation we did before. We'll let this finish. Then we'll load the other user.taz images. It wants volume two, so I'll advance the GoTech. And let's go! And finally, user taz-3. Give it a run. Okay, now let's work on another data set. Let's do the system files. I'll go find that. Sys composes of two images, sys-1 and sys-2. We'll do the same setup, slash user, or USR. Use all of the disks, floppy drive zero. And once we have sys-1 inserted into the GoTech, let's roll. Giving us all of our man files up there. Okay, let's give it the second sys.taz. Okay, that's done. 
I'll clear the screen. Now we can move on to the cmd.taz. There's three image files. I'll select that in my GoTech. So cmd-1 is in there. And we can do setup slash usr. And with TAS1 in the A drive, with CMD1 in the A drive, there's AUK and BC. L is another um, text editor, I believe. Okay. Advanced to CMD-2. There's M tools installing. Well, the source file anyway. Kermit. DHCPD. We're going to have ourselves a darn Unix light system. On the old Dolch, man. Rock and roll. And the last one. Advancing to CMD-3. Okay. Now, there's a small net.taz. It's only one disk. I'm going to change my GoTech to net. And it's a little different for this one because we're going to type setup and root. Same all in zero. Make sure net one or, you know, the only net dot image that we created is in there. Press enter. This installs our network stuff. On, the, on another video, we'll be connecting the Dolch up to the network. I have to turn on some firewall rules, but we're going to play around with that. There's Telnet. Let me zoom in for you. There's Telnet, RSH, RCP, IF config, DHCPD. Now let's create a host name. We'll type echo minix486, I guess. That's eight characters. Sometimes that's an issue here. And we'll actually echo that to etc. Hostname.file on this version. Hostname.file. Let's set a root password with passwd. That would be the password for the root and the bin user. Let's create a user. The syntax is add user. Your username can only be eight characters. So I'll just leave off the other part for me. Then a group could be administrator. We're going to type other. This will be a low access user. And then the home directory, which starts with slash USR, and I'll just name it the same as my name. Now we can sue into that user, because we're root. And let's type pass WD. And now we have a low permissions user to use. Clear the screen. Minix can't just be turned off. You have to flush its modified data. So you can either run shutdown dash H or you can just hold control alt delete. Control alt delete does the same as shutdown dash H and that'll drop you to the system. You can just type boot again. But you never just power off from here. You always want to shut down first. There are two virtual consoles available. You can type Alt and the left right arrow keys. Or Alt, F2, and F1. That allows you to log in on two terminals if needed. Uh, working as the root user is a bad thing. Don't do development as root. There's a bin user that you can do OS development on. So your bin user will have the same password as root and it's just smarter to work that way. The home directory of bin, which is in usr slash source, has an important make file. 
you can use it to recompile all the commands and libraries of the entire system. You can type make to see the different options you have to do so. You can also read the make files in commands and see exactly what it's up to and all the things that it makes and lib. This will let you understand how everything is put together. You have to type make in each subdirectory and then you can run make in user slash sort at the end to see if you've missed anything. We can try out the Elvis text editor. It's like Vim, you press I to start entering. And it has the same commands, colon Q exclamation will get you out. Here's our system, and we can look at our root slash bin folder, and also our USR slash bin folder, which is where most things are installed to. Oops. Still have a cron tab. It's interesting to see how much was there really since Unix has been around. We do have R login and Telnet. And as stated, we'll have another video where we're going to dive into that stuff. Here's the poly user. There's also a root slash minix folder. This is where your kernels are. You'll see we only have 2.0.4 now. I believe with minix, if you rebuild a kernel or recompile a kernel, it makes the newest one bootable and saves one as a, a backup or safe one. All right, well, that was pretty cool. Let's, uh, we'll remove our GoTech completely. Let's shut the system down. That'll tell all the users that it's... Oops, I can't. This is the poly user. Let's go over to uh, bin. And this one we can shut down. It'll tell all the users and shut the system down. And now, let's do a complete reboot. And we'll see Minix in action running off of our hard drive. All right, we can start Minix. Oh, actually, let me show you the boot monitor. I'll press escape. And from here, you know, we can just boot again, but you have system level uh, stuff. I'm gonna boot again. I don't think tops installed. You gotta have to come back for another video where we're gonna do networking and compile some software on here. We'll throw some like cool stuff on. Maybe we'll put like C matrix or no more secrets or some kind of that cool text-based Linux stuff. But I'm stoked that I have an image file of this Minix installation. But there you have it, folks. Base installation of Minix 2.0.4 and all the additions. I'll catch you all for the outro.